Next up for us to check it out, that will be counters. So the first one we're going to be checking out is counting up. So for a counter to work, he needs to have some form of signal to tell him to go up. So let's give him a push button one. Let's say that could be our center. And let's drag our counter. And because it requires data block, because he's got values to store, it will pop that up as well. So first things first we need to do, we've got a reset in here. Let's give him a reset as a push button a two. So if once the counter has reached that uh, counted value, he will go turn himself on. In a PV, we need to tell him how many counts. So it's going to be five. So in a, in a queue, that's going to be our output. So basically output is going to turn on. Let's give him a coil right down here, just to give our illustration purposes. Call one. And a CV, if you want to query that, how many counts has been done already. So you can query that somewhere in a program down the line if you wish to. But if you look at it just the block as well, we will see that right on the top in here. So uh, let's compile. An area, so every time it will uh, receive a pulse, as you can see. One, two, three, four and five and the counter has gone on now everything is turned on and is waiting for the reset to start count again if you try to do it again it will count up but that will be absolutely no meaning for it so it's gonna accept the count but there will be no meaning for it so and if you look at the dating block for it so it's in its data block as you can see in here the pv is five but actually cv we have done at 16 so but that the whole thing is turned on a five and after that it's pretty much, well, it's useless for him to do anything because it won't matter. He's already done his job. So for him to uh, restart, all we need to do is a reset it. And it will reset back to zero. And then we can start again. One, two, three, four, five. And the counter goes on. And that's how the counter up works. So now let's check out how the counter down works. This is on in his own data block again. So in here, we in LD is where you this time, rather than having the reset down there, you're going to have to load the value into it. So uh, LD is going to be a load the count into it so we can start counting it down. So there we go. So let's give him a uh, push button two. And how many value, how many is going to be that? Let's do five again. Again, if you want to query it, it will be a query where, where you are. That will be stored in a CV. So uh, let's uh, compile it. Load in and let's check out how that would work. So every time push button goes up, as you can see, the count goes down and output turns on as it reaches zero. For it to like a, let's call it a reset, we need to load the value in again. So by clicking a push button two, as you can see, it loaded five back in. So everything's turned off again. So then we count again, it counts down. Turn so cell phone and waiting for a, a load again. Where we're going to load those five in, and here we go, it goes about five in, and that's how the count down works. So, to finish up the uh, counter instructions, let's have a look at how the count up and down instruction works. So, let's put that into our uh, network. So, data block as typical, as you can see in here, the CU stands count up, CD stands uh, count down, R stands to reset. And uh, like our uh, account down counter, he always, uh, he obviously, he needs load his count as well to count down. So, and from there, what we're going to do in here, we're going to give him a couple of signals to test it out. So, the count up, we already have push button one. The count down is going to be a push button two. And then for the reset, we're going to give him push button three. And for a load, we're going to give him push button four. Luckily, we've got a lot of push buttons. And give them a count, uh, let's say five. Why not? And as you can see in here, we have a uh, count up uh, uh, current state. Is it on or off? And count down current state. For us to be able to monitor that better, so let's give him um, some form of memory bit. So memory bit one, so we can see how when the state's changing. So now that we've done that, let's load in and see how that works. Here we go. So as always, guys, don't forget you can query any of these data in in that specific counters data blocks. All this, all that data is accessible within their uh, uh, respectable data blocks. So in here, as you can see, my memory a bit, my down count, it is a set to true because the value is at zero. Every time the value reaches the zero, so the down count will be 
on because he reached is a zero point. So, but if we count up, so let's go and uh, click a push button one. As you can see, the state is changed. Now both are off. So I'm counting up. I'm clicking my push button at one and it counted up. And once I reach five, as you can see in there, my output 0.0, .0 has come on. If I click a uh, reset, obviously it will reset back down to zero. And as you can see, my output down count is on now as well. So because it's really gone down to zero, but let's say we go one up and then go back down again, up and again. Now, as you can see, my states are changing for a down count output. And that's pretty much how I could sum up the easiest way how the up and down counter works. Obviously, you can always load it as well into A5. As you can see, once I did the load to 5, the output quickly came on. So you can really do some very fiddly things with this count up and down counter. And that is count and up and down counter.